gin, lime juice, uh, bitters, chilled ginger ale. That can't be it. The Chinese place I had a suffering bastard at only let me have one because they said it was like too strong. All oh. right, so. Um. Are we alive now? I believe so. Yes. Vidanya is <laughs> yeah, blurry as hell. Well. <laughs> it's like this Vaseline on your screen. <laughs> Can you? Is Eric on? Who? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, he's there. Oh, oh, I didn't hear you. Sorry. Hi. Well, you guys, hey. No, you guys were talking. I didn't want to be like. Hey, what's going on, guys? Over here. <laughs> like, talk to me. Pay attention to me. Love he did, me. He didn't want to pull with me. I was just gonna say a me. <laughs> Notice me. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Izzy, uh, I got Twitch up. Just, just went live. Okay. Can you hear? I just want to make sure while I work through my understanding of how technology works that you can hear everybody. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm oh. on my uh, phone. Okay. I don't have the uh, headphones into the Twitch. I have the muted. I'm just going to double check it. No, I that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. How'd you do that? Oh, oh I had no idea what was going on. Right. It's like, I thought I said that. Did I? That was like magic. Alright. I don't know if we can hear the, um, the music, so. Mm -hmm. Let me see if that worked. Hi, everybody on the internet. <laughs> They're just talking to us, so I was like, well, oh, no. Hello again. <laughs> Hello there. I hear some music. Ooh, I like this. I'm always Thanks, jealous. I learned man. the harp. I'm always jealous of Annie's guns and all the tattoos. I'm like, if I, if I didn't have kids, I would have been all tattooed up, too. I'm just trying to play catch-up. I was, I, I was trying to get one done with Kevin, but then the whole Rooney hit. Yeah, I know. I was, uh, line, I I was trying to line up with Kevin, and then I was trying to line one up with my buddy Russ. Listen, I gotta give the people what they want. <laughs> you want to see it. She's a babe. <laughs> <laughs> Can't pull it up right enough. Uh, there's another one there. There's another one. <laughs> oh, that was down. Are you, is she listening in a oh. cup? Yeah. <laughs> That's what it looks like. Like old school. Like. <laughs> Somebody thinks uh, like, a, like a, the a little grandma song. Song. Two can, Two cans <laughs> and a <laughs> Two cans and a rope. <laughs> A very, no, really very long piece of rope. A very right. fancy rope. We have plenty of rope. We can do that. We got rope. Right. Sand's still holding the rope. <laughs> a lot of rope. Crazy he's ass only, rope. Oh, he's only got he's only got one. He's only got one of them. We've got 150 feet of rope. Uh, technically, you only have 100. Rope. Sand has 50. That's that's what I <laughs> That's why I said we. I said we. I'm not hogging all. As a rope. unit. <laughs> All right, I can definitely hear my fan <laughs> in in the playback. Um, so there's not much I can do about that, but hopefully it's not like super annoying. I thought I had like a noise suppression thing going on. So there's an only fan stroke in there somewhere. Somebody wanted to work hard. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but only. Definitely picking up my fan. All your fans. Is it heavy? Liz, is it heavy? Does it sound like this? <sighs> Liz! Yeah. Woo! Liz, we love you! No. <laughs> Although that probably. That probably would be just as annoying as the sound that's coming through right now. <laughs> 
Hey, what do you mean? I wasn't annoying. No, no not, I think that not means yet. keep doing it. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> yeah, I guess a constant berating sound would not be pleasant. Yeah. Even if it was my voice. She's just saying that now. I think you should give it a shot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, um, yeah, so I'll just get started and I'll try to ignore my incredibly loud fan and then I'll figure out that problem for the next session. Um, all right, so um, welcome to session 27 of, if you can believe it, um, nope. <laughs> Of our Tyranny yeah. of Dragons campaign. Um, Woo, Liz, we love you, Liz. <laughs> Not doing it. <laughs> so, uh, let's do the recap, I guess. Um, all right. So, when we last left the group, you you had arrived in Baldur's Gate after a three and a half day journey down the Chianthar from El Torel with Arik prematurely aged to 70 as a result of a battle with two ghosts born of a living mist. Um, the first task at hand was to locate a temple. Easy enough to do in the gate. Um, the ladies hall in the temple district provided the service to restore Arik to his original age for a cost of 550 gold. Um, from there, it was a quick stop through the Black Dragon Gate to the extremely busy outer city area of Black Gate to meet up with the contact that Anvam had told you about, Akin Celebon. Once at his shop, Akin explained that the next leg of the mission was to travel north um, with your target, and he was nice enough to give some pointers about the plan you all proposed to him, uh, essentially like don't break character, whichever way you go with it. Uh, he let you know that your best bet was to come back to Blackgate when you were ready to prep, uh, do the prep work for your trip. After that discussion, it was on to Brewbottle Tavern, um, where the adventure began for the majority of you. But not before Micaiah and Erdnot joined forces to give Arik a beautifully braided beard and a paint job. And at the tavern, it became immediately apparent that the tale of how the bar owner smashed a dude's head against the wall with a war hammer, had made the rounds, and business had picked up as a result. And um, <laughs> we pick up as the group enters the lower level of Erdnot's tavern and home. Um, and Erdnot, you can give a description of, of your the room that everybody walked down into, and I'm actually gonna switch you guys over so that you can see on your screens, what, um... Really, really shitty rendering that I wish I had the time to actually do better. Well, it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, this is really it, quick, <laughs> and it looks like it's shit. It's beautiful, Cuba, and we appreciate it. <laughs> Alright, just making sure you guys nice can try. move here. You can move your characters if you need to. I think you can. Oh, yeah, it's 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 just a lower level. Uh, I didn't write the description for this one because it's like kind of self-explanatory. When you look Oops. at it, it's you right at the bottom of the stairs. The wall, one wall is lined with like like boxes full of like um, hops and uh, barley and other brewing. Stuff, uh, and then there's barrels on the other side that um, are either empty or will be full soon or be filled soon. And then there's like a workbench in the corner there. Um, you know, just like basic tools. It's 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 just like a multi-purpose workbench, like a surface for any uh, you know the brewing that needs to be done, and then also any like. Um, working on weaponry or armor or what have you and then uh as you see along the wall though there's three large fermenters in uh, various states of um uh, fermenting right. and 
and that's what you see in that oh. room. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 a it's a it's a it's a dank basement, I guess. I don't know, not dank. It has to be somewhat sterilish because it's you know. Anyways, it's cool. It's cool down there. Like not cool. I mean, it is cool, but I mean, it's cool as in cooler <laughs> than the above levels. Pretty, pretty fucking sweet digs, pal. <laughs> yeah, sweet setup. Um, can I ask DM what what time of day is it? Um, it is. Uh, it was like about five o'clock at night. Uh oh. Nobody heard you. Her, nope, her audio. All right, hold on, hold on. Nope. Still can't hear you. Okay, okay, okay. Hold on. <laughs> can you hear me now? Yep. yep. All right. So I I, en I enabled push to talk. I enabled oh, nope. I enabled push to talk. Oh. 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 But I think you can still hear hear my um stupid fan maybe. We'll see. All right. So um yeah, it's about five o'clock p.m. ish. Five six o'clock. So what's um, the plan, y'all? Erdy, what are we doing? I'm trying to remember, what the hell are we doing here? Oh, well, uh, we have to lay low, right? For when did the guy say we have to go back to see him? Next day or a couple of days? He said whenever you're ready, you can go back to him. Um, based off of your understanding of how um, the timing, um, you have quite a bit. You have quite a bit of time, like like uh, a week before you think, like give or take a few days, the the um, the cult should be arriving based off of what Anthar told you, like within the next seven to ten days. Well, we must gather our supplies, formulate our plan, and I recommend you lay low here. And pointing at uh, Eckert says, The new boy, I suggest you not go up above during working hours. Mm, I don't like that. I want to be in this dank, dank basement <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> well, it's better than losing your life, honey. This will be the most secure and safest place. Because you may sleep out here, or... And he kind of struggles thinking about it for a minute and then says, or you can sleep in my chamber. Aww. Aww, Erdy, that's so sweet. Aww. But don't I touch don't... my stuff. He does have a car. <laughs> he just, he doesn't share his toys. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, I guess he, he would, or not will go and just show them that room so, instead of just Standing in the oh, I just went through the wall. Erdy, <laughs> 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 another wall. Didn't you learn already about smashing things into walls? <laughs> <laughs> I I would just take a look through the doorway, and see this really really comically small bed, and just kind of <laughs> just shake my head. I mean, I couldn't I couldn't even sit on this thing without breaking it. Well, and, I, uh, he, he didn't say you're gonna oh. sleep in his bed. <laughs> he, just, he just said you can. Hey, <laughs> hey, if you're gonna give if you're gonna give me the run of this place while you're upstairs doing whatever, if it was big enough, I'd be sleeping on the bed. <clears throat> <laughs> Your uh, feet would be make... like hanging off by like two feet. <laughs> I was gonna say I, my knees. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks extra comically small because it's actually a relatively large room that he that he sleeps in in comparison to himself and the bed and i actually wrote a description for that and i will read it if i can find it uh la, 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 la. okay okay oh so anyway so anybody who's looking into the room or goes into the room uh you'll see that there's like uh, like a, a bookshelf a weapon area and like a little shrine so uh See, the weapons thing that he has, it's uh, very well organized, like insanely organized. Everything is, all the weapons are very clean, 
no blood stains. Uh, everything is sharp, clean, polished, and in, in, in perfect order. You see um, uh, studded leather armor, a um, metal breastplate armor, um, seven javelins along the wall, two daggers neatly next to each other, one great axe leaning against the wall, three short swords, five throwing axes, a heavy crossbow, and then a bolt, uh, uh, not a quiver, uh, a package, qui- whatever, uh, a Google of bolts for the damn thing is uh, sitting next to it, um, ready to go, which is an impressive array accumulated, bought, or taken off of bodies over the years. Uh, the bookshelf is also very neatly organized. It's full of uh, various maps, you notice, um, and uh, of just very dungeons and villages. And there's a really large map spread out um, on the thing. It's of the Sword Coast, and there's various X marks on it in, in different locations. Um, there's several uh, b- bound leather books. Some of them look very, very old, like they, like, you know, like the pages have been, you know, not, not, not when you got like a nice crisp, clean book and it looks like it's been pressed flat. It's just like, it just looks like every page has been crinkled at some point on, on many of them. Uh, so they've clearly been used, written in or, or whatever. Uh, and then there's other, a few that look like they are untouched, like they are brand new books. Um, there's several other books. Uh, some are in, some have dwarvish writing on them. Um, a bunch have, a few have common, and then there's one elven book. There's a stack of rune of uh, rune stones uh, on there as well. And then across from that, on the other wall, there is a shrine, and that's next to his bed. It uh, on the table of the shrine, there is a golden beer stein. It is immaculately crafted. It's inlaced with uh, silver and like just the like most beautifully cut stones you've probably ever seen. Uh, Ooh, I'm clearly, iron. Oh, I'm not there yet. <laughs> clearly, <laughs> dwarven iron, craftsmanship. <laughs> uh, behind the, the golden stein stands a two foot tall golden statue of a dwarf. His beard seems to take up about two thirds of the body, uh, <laughs> and most of his face is, is obscured also by the beard. And, the, and then uh, he wears a battle helmet that covers from the eyes to up, and uh, with two like insanely large horns coming off the side. Like it, it looks probably comical to anyone who doesn't know who this is. Um, and uh, he has. Uh, He's like he, in his hands. He's holding uh, in one hand. He's holding a, a weapon. It's like uh, axe on one side, and then a hammer on the other side. And then the other hand, he's holding a large drinking tankard. And uh, the statue is completely like looks like one solid gold piece with like insanely detailed, um, insane, insanely detailed details. That's that's terrible. <laughs> sentence structure probably like cut into it it's just like <laughs> um yeah it's just like i don't even know how to properly explain it just the well, detail on this statue is it's detail is insane, it's insane detail it's insane uh, detail and it's solid yeah, solid details. gold except for the the drink tankard he's holding in the other hand that is full of more amazingly cut uh gems and runic writing all in it and then there is um a bunch of um unlit candles that clearly are lit from time to time all around that and then his tiny little bed (laughs) (laughs) which is also very very neat everything is folded you know nothing is out of place (laughs) not for long i'm gonna have a pillow fight i'm sleeping over So I guess he turns to you and he says, it's like, you're welcome to sleep in here or out there. I have no other beds. I have maybe some extra furs. Uh, You'll have to sleep on your roll mats. I look around and 
take note of the weapons. Eric would obviously have an appreciation for the care that went into those. Um, I just kind of, I'll make do. I'd probably just find a little spot um, somewhere in this corner over here and just kind of put my stuff down. And then I would pull just something out of corner. my pocket and I would read it. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> He's going to sleep in this corner. Yeah, I claimed it. Claim this corner is mine. <laughs> he pees in it. <laughs> I mean, I, I, gotta do what I gotta do. I don't know how you guys, uh, how you dwarves deal with territory. <laughs> <laughs> do you guys pee on it? Like, humans pee on stuff. The market? <laughs> nope, nope. We don't have those. I don't want to try to sit on your bed and sit in the wet spot. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm not down to sit on no wet spot. I'm a lady or not, through bottle. <laughs> I hope you're offering your bed to one of these ladies. Offer my bed to myself. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so just about just that when time. I thought you were getting loving. Um, nobody else was nobody else was gonna fit on the bed except for maybe Uncle Ari. <laughs> you hear um... his horse could fit in the bed. You, you hear some footsteps coming down those sta- the stairs, and you see um, the the cousin come down the stairs, Garmir. Um, he kind of like clomps down, um, and you can hear upstairs like you can feel it because there it's just upstairs. You can feel like the the footsteps, and and it's really rowdy upstairs from here. Um, and you can hear that there's just like it's much busier than definitely the day that you all arrived um, a month ago now. Uh, and so Garmir comes down the stairs and he like rounds the corner um, and nods to each of you as he as he passes um, and then comes into the living area or not and says like. Cousin, it's good to see you. We didn't really get to say much upstairs. How how are you? How how has the the trip been? More complicated than ever imagined. <laughs> and who's who's this uh, group that you're with? I have, I see you've joined a new crew. What are you all? Uh, what are you calling yourselves these days? Don't call us the bums of greenest. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer the champions of greenest. But these all, you know, trashy people over here, they want to say bums, 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 butts, butts. So all they talk about is butts. <laughs> he kind of like raises an eyebrow and he's like, the bums of greenest. <laughs> the right. fucking bums the fucking bums of greenest <laughs> the wicked fucking bum <laughs> bums is a it, it, I mean bum is a word it has so many meanings in yes. different languages isn't it great he nods like mm. really slowly and he looks around at all of you and he says I'm I'm Erdnot's cousin Garmir I don't think he did the pleasure of introducing us no, he did not. Er, not. That's <laughs> Erdnot's us. way. Don't be rude. Where's your manners? Being quite courteous. <laughs> you made it sound like you're going to whack him on the nose with a rolled up magazine. <laughs> Where is your manners, young man? I was going to book, and I was going to whack him right in the face. <laughs> Where's your manners? And so who are your friends, Erdnot? He's like waiting. <laughs> well, I'm Makaya. I'm a loudmouth. I'm Makaya. Not point to Avedon. You. you what did you say? I point to you. Like go. Uh, say who you are. Wait, where is this guy? Is he by the door? Is he by Makaya? Can he see me yet? Yeah, he's he's in the he's room. Like you. he kind of pushed by you guys and is in the room, like like right about oh. there with uh with next to his cousin. Oh okay. 
Uh, okay, I'll introduce myself. I'll, I'll say I'm Abaddon. Hi, I'm Abaddon! <laughs> Hi! <laughs> Oh my god, it's so I good to me. I love long walks on the beach and moonlight restaurants and I'll just I'm gonna do that a lot quieter than I was just joking. I'll just say Good to meet you, I'm Avadon. So serious. <laughs> I don't know. Like way, yeah. Yeah, true. way too serious for Avadon. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm Vidanya. You can call me Zan. Um, <laughs> since I don't know your cousin and I don't trust him, I'm just going to say uh, no one of consequence. Grab my stuff and come on over into this corner. Lay all my stuff out on this working table. My weapons and armor and whatnot. He looks at you or not and he's like, you always did know how to pick them. So, don't let them fool you. They are actually uh, quite interesting and, and uh, able warriors. I wouldn't doubt it for a moment, cousin. Erdy! Now he's getting all soft. <laughs> he's getting soft now that he's near his home. He's home. Uh, in he his home. scowls. <laughs> so how long will you be staying here? How long will you be staying with us? You will have noticed all of the it's gotten a lot more busy since you since you left. Yeah, that I have noticed that might draw more problems to us. Might be a few days. Uh, bring bring us food when you can, and when we close tonight, I will go upstairs and tell you what is going on. All right, I've been staying in the the room uh, with just the one bed. While I've been here, the other room has been available because I didn't feel comfortable with strangers sleeping in the rooms next to me. So, there is space. We've been making plenty without having to rent out the rooms. Very good. Very good. No news from home besides the letter? That's the only one. Up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or not, just kind of nods all right i'll leave you to it then then he nods to each of you and then he heads back up the stairs uh, younger cousins <laughs> <laughs> yeah and that and that dwarf looked like almost exactly like or not except he <laughs> has um his hair is not like white and he had like longer hair and well he had hair where or not has none um and his beard is just kind of like loose as opposed to being in those like little tight three braid like things um it's loose and then like braided more down at the bottom and his hair is like a darker color so it, they could have been brothers but younger um and with more more beautiful flowing locks of hair. Oh, pardon. Sounds he's like probably, he's probably like a hundred years <laughs> younger than or not. Or um, so. I'm gonna go over here and I wanna just look at the bookshelf. I just wanna just casually see what's up there. What's up there? I'm, uh, I'm gonna take some stuff. Take some. It like, looks at you, I, but. Since you're not touching anything, he's okay. Well, what's on the bookshelf? She's looking at the bookshelf. Oh, oh. Um, what in particular? Like, I'm creeping. There's, there's there's the there's the big open map with the X marks and various locations, and there's rolled up maps of like various it looks like dungeons or layers or fortresses, and then. Um, like a bunch of, I guess you could probably tell that some of the books might be like journals. Uh, same with like the rune stones. I guess I don't know. I feel like I'm DMing now, but I guess if you <laughs> roll a high enough perception, you might be able to notice something in, I guess, a correlation between them. Maybe I, I, I don't know if anybody can read dwarf. So no, there is that. <laughs> okay. Well, good. My secrets are secret. 
Um, and that's there's actually, one book of uh, Izzy, Elvin. I just had one one question about that. I noticed in the book I was looking at the other day, there's a few languages that use a dwarven script. If we speak a language that uses a dwarven script, would we be able to read dwarvish? Um, so is that like, uh, I guess it would depend on Erdnot's collection. Well, the, 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 the dwarf language written is, is like the, the runes and I guess it's not, from what I've read, it's not specifically just to dwarves, I guess, uh, giants, ogres, orcs, gnomes, and goblins also use this like same alphabet oh yeah, yeah. I th that's what that, yeah that's what i was asking that that's what i saw i just <laughs> looked it up the other day i can't find it now but yeah there's a few languages that use the dwarven script mm -hmm. and i i speak giant so i wasn't sure if i'd be able to to because read the, the, any of the books giant i speak giant too there's, there's i mean probably it's up to the DM, but it's there's one thing like knowing how to speak a language and then knowing how to read a language. Mm. So but, yeah, um, I'm not the DM I guess here. it also <laughs> would depend on if you're looking at the bookshelf because <laughs> you guys are not near I, the I am, bookshelf. Yeah, I'm not looking at it. This was like a, a, a game question. Okay, yeah. yeah. Avedon, do you speak giant? Mm -mm. No, I speak. Crazy. I've got infernal. No. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Got no devil talk in my bookshelf. No. Right. No draconic. Or... <laughs> so, um, are the runes like a pile of root, like rune stones? It's uh, yeah. It's like a stack of maybe like two inch thick. But like paper-sized stones, oh. like oh. slabs, and then the runic writing is on them, and it's like it, it's written in like spiral-wise. It's not like left to right. It, it's like it starts in the middle and spirals outward. Well, none of that makes sense to me, so I'm gonna go look at the shrine. <laughs> 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 Or not it, bellow it like, out. It's uh, like, you, no. oh, go ahead. sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I was gonna say, as you, you take interest in the shrine and or not bellows out. He's like, Henseeth, the bearded one. Um, is it clearly a shrine, or could this be just like a pile of stuff with candles? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'd say it's like, pretty clearly a shrine. Is there anything I can touch on there? Is there anything shiny? Uh, well, there are two very large things of solid gold. <laughs> I just want to, like, touch them. It's like, I don't know if you'll be able to, like... I mean, the cup is, is a golden cup, so you could probably pick that up. and Or not, we'll look at you. Squinting. Uh, I don't recommend picking up the statue of the dwarf. And I don't think you could, because it is two feet tall of solid gold. Oh, on the shrine is all that gold? <laughs> yes, the cup and the dwarf statue are gold. The candles are not. It's a rather strong shelf. <laughs> <laughs> it's built by dwarfs. I'll just admire it, I think. And I'll probably touch the um, goblet, but I won't pick it up. I'll just kind of like, boop. <laughs> I'm just gonna be you, bit. <laughs> Boop the snoot. It's shiny. <laughs> um. Do, uh. Well, out of I guess like out of game since I don't know everything that happened last time. And so we, we do when we want to talk out of game. We I make guess. it the loser thing. <laughs> no, you do that. <laughs> out of game. Because <laughs> we we didn't meet Garmir, right? And we're here for five to seven days to wait until the um, the cultists arrive. Well, at the beginning of the game, he wasn't here at the bar. Okay. 
What? Mm. Oh yeah, no, Garmir was not, yeah. When you guys were here um, back a month ago, Garmir was not at the bar. He was, he was somewhere else. So we never met him. No, you okay. didn't meet him. So last session, you guys met him when you walked in the door, um, but he didn't really get to talk to you because you walked in, it was really busy. Or not ask for a distraction. He announced mm. that there was a round of beers on the house, and so that you guys could walk down the stairs. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. So, did we all decide that we're staying here for the night and kind of laying low, or is that still something that people can go wherever they want? But uh, this is like I think the most secure place to be right now. I mean, not that we're the ones being hunted. <laughs> Someone else in the party is, but he's hidden. Or disguised, rather. I'm, I'm all dolled up. I oh, feel like no I'm going to know who he is She doesn't now. know. Cause... Describe, describe uh, what you look like to her, because she, she okay. wasn't here. Oh, yeah, and Medanya missed that part, right? Okay. Um, Erd not use those stubby little uh, fingers of his, but yet somehow masterfully and did very intricate braids all throughout my beard. So I've got about a bunch of three or four inch braids that are in my beard now. And uh, the ends are all dyed semi-permanent, like a red. Um, and then Makaya had used some kind of uh, semi-permanent ink, like almost like a semi-permanent tattoo ink, and she did some runes in a different language um, in a thick line across from my ear, down my cheek, up and above the bridge of my nose, over the other cheek to the other ear, and then beginning, uh, that was one, and it has all different runes that mean different things, and then another one that starts just above the center of my forehead, running in a line like a mohawk basically running down the middle of my head down to the back of my neck again all runes and whatnot um so, like the guy from god of war basically right <laughs> sick sort of i don't do that. i don't know if, yeah something like that anyways i think he had it over his eye but something in that effect yeah and they'd be yeah. um red and black so and that was all makaya's handiwork she rolled good on that so <laughs> um, they did it so good. So yeah, I feel like the. Um, you guys ever played Grand Theft Auto? Mm -hmm. no. You know when you roll into the paint shop, no. you, you could have like the wanted level, and then you get into the paint <laughs> shop, and it goes away because you come out nice Stars and shiny. Go away. Yeah, that's what I. That's what I felt like. I felt <laughs> fucking. I felt beautiful. <laughs> and then um. So, yeah, that was what I looked like. My overall plan is, although I'm being hunted, I'm not going to want to lay low. It's not going to be in his nature to want to stay in this for the next seven to ten days in this dank basement. Okay, so, so I definitely, now knowing that we can have this conversation, I, would do, I want everybody to, well, I want to ask you, Eric, okay. if that, how you want to approach this, how you feel most comfortable. Um... Certainly don't want to stay in this wet, dank basement. <laughs> no offense, no offense, or not. Uh, what well, you said, dank. Dank mean would I think dank is wet? I don't know. Oh, the, uh, the room. The room is nice. <laughs> well, I'm not staying in the room. I'm staying in this corner. That's true. Uh, uh, so yes, I'm not gonna want to stay in this down here the whole time. If I disguise myself, I'm thinking maybe. There's two ways to approach it I brought up last last time we talked was either I can lay low, which I don't want to do, or I can try to disguise myself and stand out absolutely so much that nobody actually thinks that Arik would do that. I'm thinking about posing as a bounty hunter that's actually looking for Arik. Um, I feel like that's a decent cover story. So also, if... you don't want to blow that load before we even get to the caravan. <laughs> so you might want to lay just, low here just, and not go peacocking all around the bar that is possibly being watched. Oh, I just mean going out at night and stuff like that. I'm not going to go out during the day or anything. Oh, I so, I'll sleep days goes out go out at nights. You know, like a college kid. Um, 
but yeah, I would want to probably grab some things out of the bag of holding just to kind of give myself a more exotic or primitive appearance. The leather vest, the wooden ring, any kind of ribbons and leather pieces that I can just kind of tie to myself, that type of thing. So did, did we were we told about um, after the five to seven days, like how we'd know if the co where how we know uh, that the cult was passing through, like how to rec like recognize or where to see them or where to be? Yeah, so did, when when you guys uh, talked to Akin Celebon, um, he told you that typically the best way to um, uh, get hired out if you guys wanted to do that um, was to hang around in, in Blackgate at the um, the tents uh, the tent taverns and um, those areas uh, in the outer city where he's at and um, you guys didn't go into anything about the cult specifically um, but he just said that that's where you're going to want to be, and he told you to come back when you guys were ready because you had mentioned that you wanted to um, pose as the cult or pose as merchants going. Um, and his recommendation was that, you know, whatever you want to do is fine, but keep in mind that the merchants don't fight. So, you know, typically how it works is um, merchants will all gather uh, in in that area up north because um, horses and everything are not allowed in Baldur's Gate so they'll they transport their goods through Baldur's Gate by hand um, meet up in, in Blackgate or the opposite way you meet in Blackgate you transport through the other way um, and then um, they'll the merchant caravan will, will form a caravan. All the different merchants will come together. They'll hire guards, like kind of as a group, individually, mm -hmm. but move as a group, so that the the caravan itself, even if they're not all related to each other, is is well protected. Um, so, y if you want to pose as a merchant with um, with guards, that's fine, but. It's a, you know, 45 plus day journey, so you don't want to break character and merchants do not fight. They hold on to their, um, their gear and they hire guards very specifically to fight for them. Um, so you don't want to end up in a situation where you're like throwing down when you're a merchant because that will kind of give something away that you're not, you know, normal, but that's, that's, um, he told you it's really up to you, but if you want it to be successful, you're going to want to um, stay in character. So your two options are the one that you presented, which is a viable option, or to all get hired in some capacity or, tra or uh, as guards or travel together in some other way, just as a traveler or a tag-along um, with an the other caravans that are going to come together. But... Um, but you have several days just that he said like when you're ready when you've discussed what your plan is going to be to come back to him and he'll help you out Ooh, that's a lot to think about <laughs> oh there's so much to think about um it's just dinner time right but we're getting food delivered we're getting room service yeah, yeah. those are got you well, uh, um, perhaps we should just round table gut feeling. Do we pose as merchants or guards? What does everyone think? Well, I mean, Ur uh, Ur Urgent not ideas. is a merchant. Right. And if we're all guards, it makes sense. Whether will or not... Will Ur not be able to not fight if attacked? Well, no. I mean, I don't... Well, I mean, the, so, here's the thing is that I don't think he doesn't have to. If he's regionally famous for this in Baldur's Gate, I mean, nobody's not going to expect a, a dwarf not to fight, especially one who has a reputation for uh, already smashing somebody's head in. Definitely be known 
in and around Baldur's Gate. And beyond that, there's probably very few people alive who would know the brew, the greatness of the brew bottle. But, uh, um, but yeah, I don't think it's, you know, the cover story would be legit because it's like, oh, hey, it's like, it's that brew bottle dwarf. He's going on the road with his with his shit to sell and he's looks like he's got a bunch of mercs but everybody knows that you know he's a dwarf he's gonna protect his whether he has guards hired or not maybe he doesn't need to fight right away but I don't think it's I don't think it would yeah if, if I was like um, so if it was like Abaddon that was posing as the merchant oh, we lost uh, lost him and he's back he's back <laughs> if it was Avedon posing, if it was honestly anybody else posing as as the merchant, then it's like, yeah, you would have to like not fight because it would be out of character, like the dude said. But I don't think it'd be out of character for a dwarf or especially me. Not every me. dwarf can fight, but Erdnot specifically, he you you have you have had that incident that happened in your bar. So and and it did get around that a warhammer was used. So. You know, fighting is not a thing every dwarf does. The, you guys are adventurers, so he has an adventuring background. That can work. That could work for you. I just think the more legit we make this, this, the story, the harder it is for someone uh, to roll really well and poke holes into it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the rest of us don't have to really know much. We just got hired. You know what I mean? Right, exactly. It really just comes down to, it comes down to you to be... Yeah, uh, le legit. I suppose we don't I have to know it, anything. Is it common for a, um, a brewer merchant to hire one, two, three, four, five guards? Would Say I know it. that? <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of people to guard like one wagon full of beer. If that's what we're taking, if we're taking a wagon. I want the beer. Well, at one point we were talking about you being his, like, personal assistant of some kind. Mm -hmm. Like a accountant or something like that. Me being, I think, his personal personal guard. And then the other, uh, the three fae being, uh, like, the hired guards that yeah. he just picked up. I right, think that's but, probably the best. If we're worried about encountering a lot of combat along the way and you don't want to be down in numbers, then you can all be posing as guards. True. That that that's what I was gonna say is if yeah, people are posing as accountants and assistants, it's gonna kinda of blow our cover if they start fighting. I think we have I was I was just right. thinking I was just trying to think I was thinking thinking more that like I don't know, tieflings aren't common, so I, if she was posing as like a, just like an assistant or something like that, instead of a guard, then then I think that would be less conspicuous, maybe. But it's okay. I bought makeup. Anthar gave me makeup. <laughs> Get from makeup. So you've got a so I'm good at giving people so makeup. makeup. Nonstop. Um. So. I just want to be clear, is that we're going to be traveling with another group of merchants who will be on the same trail as the cultists? No, we're going to be with the cultists, aren't we? Or is there, that's what I'm wondering, is there a group of merchants that we're traveling with, or are we going to be following the cult? Like, you know how it's a caravan of merchants? Are those all suspected cultists or is this just a caravan that would be traveling anyway so the the conversation that you had with Anthar was that you would meet they wanted you to come to Baldur's Gate and then um, essentially survey the um, the cultists as they head up north so um, they told you that the the merchants all meet up in that, like, 
at Baldur's Gate and then they travel north together. They are not necessarily related to each other, but the merchants will, and, and travelers, not just merchants, but travelers and others who are trying to get from Baldur's Gate up to Waterdeep, or even further north from there, um, will come together, um, kind of individually hire a few guards, like two or three, and then with like a big group of them all going together, they're protected. So mm -hmm. what they would like for you to do is follow the cult in their caravan up north. So you're, you'll, you still have several days, so you're not quite sure exactly what that looks like, but the, 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 the intel that um, Anthar and Leosin gave you was that it did not appear that the cult was coming to attack Baldur's Gate. They're bringing all of their loot and everything, and then are, gonna, are transporting it north based off of the documents that you, you gave them. Um, mm -hmm. you, you gave Anthar and Leosin. That's what they have deduced. Um, so you need to follow them north. And the easiest way to do that is to join their caravan as they move through. Okay. So, okay. See, Lauren yeah. asks the important questions. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I don't think I even like, thought yeah. of that. But so we don't like, know necessarily if you. this if the group in seven day or in five to seven days if that group of merchants and travelers and everything we don't know if that if those are cultists. We're we're just no, so you want to be looking out for the cultists. <laughs> Okay. and then join their caravan when they head north. You don't know how many will be heading north or if they'll all be like all the same time or if there's gonna be multiple groups of it, but um, Anthar and Leosin said that it looked like they were gathering up all the loot that they stole from the various um, places that they went to and then were transporting it along um, the, the road from, well, there wasn't a road, but along the way from um, Green, Greenest to um, Baragost, and then Baragost north up the coastway to Baldur's Gate, and then it looks like they're going to head north from there. And the only way to get north from Baldur's Gate um, on, on foot is for um, these caravans to kind of group together for safety and travel together. Okay. Ooh. Oh. Do, do um, we know, like, are there, are nope. there any Sorry. Up north? Would any of us know, like, what terrain we're heading for? Yeah. Like, do we need to be prepared for, like, colder weather? Do we need, like, different gear type of thing? Yeah, so you, it's definitely um, getting into winter time. Um, you were told that the trip will take you anywhere from like 45 to 60 days so um it is um like let's just where is this one okay it is oh oh Hold on. can't hear Sorry. you oh. hold on oh no eric's gone <laughs> what's happening oh. i need to be in person again guys <laughs> Oh. You there? Uh, Although it's cute to see the cat. Trondor. <laughs> yeah, my, my, st my stuff keeps cutting out. I don't know if that happened to yeah. you guys, too. Or... No, it's just... You cut out of our Um, So it is... Um, right now, it's like October 1st in, in context. So by the time you get okay. where you need to be, it's likely to be like... Um, into December, De like mid December, like January time, late December. So it's it's the first of, nope, it is not the first anymore. It is the fourth of um, leaf fall right now. So um, you have another, you know, seven to ten days, which will put you in the uh, second week of the month. And if you leave within a couple of days of finding them then it'll yeah you're, you're looking at like two months so it's definitely going to get colder 
Um, the terrain is uh, your well, Makaya, you would be familiar because you have escorted people um, along actually probably this route before um, or at least a similar way uh, there's multiple routes that can be taken but um, you know that it gets really hairy from uh, Baldur's Gate until you reach let me just pull up there's um, a river Hey! Is it busy? The sorceress is familiar on her shoulder. Yeah, right? Until you reach oh, um, the uh, winding water, there's a Boriskir bridge that most people will travel along. Um, but you have, to, you have to cross through the fields of the dead first, which is... Oh the roughest part that's like right out of Baldur's Gate going north. Uh, north that sounds too scary for a trip. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> well, that's why that's why the caravans hire the guards. Um, okay, then, we all have to guards. <laughs> so then from, from the bridge, um, you again pass through more uh, more rolling hills and, and whatnot. And then when you get to um, Dragon Spear Castle. You pick up a road from there, and then things get a little easier. But there's still hardships along the way. It's just that that first stretch, which is a good like a good week, a ten day, um, through the fields of the dead, is not a safe time. Is it just not safe because of the? The creatures there or is it not safe like the terrain's not safe like it's hard to get through um it's a combination but mostly mostly the creatures this is um there was like battles and stuff obviously fields of the dead um there and it's now it's like mostly used for farming and ranching but um it's a wide open and, and dangerous. There's all kinds of stuff. Would I have, like, knowledge of what kind of creatures are there? Like, would I know if there's ghosts or other things? Or... Not what so much shit? Not so much ghosts. I mean, there's a lot of stuff. But, so, like, hobgoblins and, you know, goblins of that type. Gnolls, like, the kind in of... In other words, I'm asking, because, like, would I be able to fill them in on, like, what kinds of things to get prepared with to fight different creatures? Or is that not, like, allowed? No, no, no. You, so basically, I'm kind of telling you everything that I'm assuming you're telling them. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> yeah. So like gnolls, uh, goblins, just kind of like your roving bands of things. Is there's, there's all kinds of stuff. Like you, you would have fought um, mostly like the humanoid kind of goblins and okay. whatnot. Okay. Gotcha. I just didn't know if there was any weird things there to be aware of. What do we want to do? Do we want to stick with the merchant idea and you're the guards, or do we just all want to go pose as or get hired as muscle? The advantage I see to you being the merchant would be that we're not responsible to anybody else, just ourselves. Exactly. So we can kind we of go off to... on our own if we need to, or you know, go here or there, but if we're posing as somebody's guards and they ask us to go do something mm -hmm. and, like, it's not a good time to go do it or, or it goes against something that we're trying to do, that's going to be a bad situation. One, one thing that we lose by being Erdnod's guards is we lose our anonymity. We're... True. Er, we're going under Erdnod's well, name. What about this? Doesn't he look like his cousin? Didn't she just say he looks just they look just alike? Couldn't they couldn't we disguise both of them to pretend Erd not staying behind and he's his cousin? Ooh. And his cousin's here, Gray. That 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 was my suggestion that even if Erdnot is still the merchant, he doesn't go as Erdnot. Right. That way we're all under assumed identity. Well, and then it would actually like be like people would think Erdnot's 
at his tavern. Mm-hmm. Well, they could they could have he. So it's almost like a decoy. Like he could have just like go there assistant. looking for us or whatever, and we're not there. So I'm gonna say that during this time that you're chatting, the uh, um, Erdnot's cousin brought you down some food. Um, the night is wearing on, and people are starting to. The I don't know what time your tavern closes, <laughs> but um, it never. It, Taverns close in this world. I, well, you said to Emma. my cousin when the tavern closes, so I'm going to assume like 2 a.m., 2, 3 in the morning. Um, he brought down food before then uh, anyway for you, but um, yeah, it's, so it's getting up to, as you guys are chatting about like what your next plans are, um, you do have several days, so if there's anything specific you want to do in those days, or we can... Um, you can decide what you're going to do, and then and then you can head back over to um, Akin. Mm, I I definitely want to visit a um, uh, a spell scroll seller. Oh my god! I think we tried. Did we try that last time or no? Try did that. you already? I think we did. Yeah. I can't. I'm sorry. I can't remember what happened. Another one. Yeah, it's a very, very uh, big city. You guys tried to yeah. kind of look in the, um, you tried at first to look in like the really rich area, but then realized it was a little bit expensive. Yeah. And then you only kind of looked for a minute. I have a, a do okay that, we... idea of where I could get that, right? Are we, are Probably. we deciding what we're going to do though? Mm-hmm. About, or not, merchant stuff? I mean not can use his cousin's name but like he thinks that they look completely different so I don't know what uh, you know if all dwarves look alike to <laughs> to non dwarves type of deal you can roll me uh, an, roll me an investigation check me, oh, me? Abaddon um okay well what if he just sent his assistant and then we disguised him. Ooh, that's not a bad one. And then we just kept a hood on you, and, and you're a guard, an unrecognizable, unnamed guard. And I'm the one in the forefront or something like that. Well, then again, you wouldn't be able to fight. Yeah, we need you, though. Down. We need you in the fights. Well, yes yeah. and no. I think, I mean, there are definitely, I have the... the I'm attuned to the amulet of the dynamo, so I don't necessarily, for a couple spells, or um, between rests, I can use a spell without anybody knowing. Oh. Is it a risk worth taking? I don't know. I don't know what's out there, friends. Well, she just said it's really dangerous. Well, again, again, the thing is, like, they're not looking for us, except for Eckert. But that is unrelated to the cult. Oh well, yeah. And the only ones who would recognize us would be the guys who outed us, the the mercenaries that outed us in the 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 cult's camp. They would be the only ones left alive who I think would recognize us. Yeah, I don't think we have to worry too much about being recognized. It was just that you could remain. It could remain not erd not like you don't rather than pretending you're your cousin you're just neither of you are there and you just aren't you're just a guy do you know what i'm trying to say yeah i i failed to see the benefit of it are you saying so i could fight Is... yeah because you're if you're on the ground you're a lot more valuable than i am no, but I'm, he would. But if, even if, he, if he, even as a merchant, he already has a reputation for, for right. fighting and being an adventurer. So I don't right. think with him as a merchant, we don't lose anything. He could fight. I think. He could but fight. with you posing as the merchant of sorts or whatever, then we lose you. If you're not worried or not about them knowing that you're there, then no, I, I well, would not would not care. I was going to say you're. You see, say you're, you're the not, merchant, and we're the guards, and that way we can do what we want. So Erdnot seems to be a pretty proud dude. How would he feel about using a different name anyways? Would true. No, you're true. That? He would probably answer me. Go ahead. 
tell me I'm ridiculous. Yeah, but right. but never, it's another man's game. <laughs> I'm a puppy like that. <laughs> basically, right? Am I right? Aye. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess then, I guess the the other question is if someone asks us about our travels and what we're doing and why we're bringing all this booze somewhere, maybe we should have that story together. Yeah. We were, we were hired to. <laughs> That's all. Yeah. <laughs> we were hired out of Baldur's Gate by Erd not to do it. Yeah. Really? That's and, I, I, and I just say, I was trying to, you know, make some extra profit in spreading uh spreading my uh yeah my, my um, oh, let, letting your, letting, your letting the common rise. folk taste my amazing <laughs> ale <laughs> there you go have it on what kind of spell <laughs> what kind of spell scrolls are you looking for um good ones what did you say i said good ones <laughs> Um, if I'm they're to do with ropes, we have a lot of rope. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to say we already had bondage. bad luck with that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Can I look for? They're special. <laughs> Spe- I guess I would want to look for the um, the spell that I can't remember the name of right now. Of course. <laughs> That can help to hide our buddy over here. Oh. If we have, if I can look for that spell and if, is that, yes, that's it, that's yeah. it. So I'd like to look for that and then any other um, um, uh, defensive spells, Spazzy. I guess. Defensive or, yeah. No, wait, no, I changed my mind. I want, um, <laughs> <laughs> I want to look for um, group protection spells. Ooh, I like that. I do have one that lasts for an hour. Well, it's not non-detection, but you get plus 10 to your stealth, so it's pretty... Alright, you're not able to find um, a non-detection scroll. That seems like a very specifically... Unfindable scroll. It's, um, <laughs> it's not very common for people to want that scroll. Like, mm. it's gonna go to a shady area. It's not. It's. It's very specific of what you're trying to avoid with that spell. So mm. it's not a super common scroll. Um. Are there any like magic schools or like wizard schools around here? Is Hogwarts nearby? <gasps> I knew you were gonna say that. <laughs> <laughs> You're a wizard. Um, yeah, there's definitely um, in Baldur's Gate. There's definitely areas that sell. Would they have that? Would they know that? They More they may, but stuff. this this spell only lasts eight hours. Right. Um, in terms of, um, you're looking for scrolls that do group protection? Like, pro- yeah, like a, like, yeah, something like that. Um. Like a cool one where you can, like, use a rope to go up into a hidden <laughs> invisible box. Right. One of those would be cool. Oh, <laughs> uh, don't get Erd not started again. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag Uncle Ari. <laughs> Hashtag. Hashtag birth a scroll to a Chris. Still soft. You know, I, I thought I made this up until... <laughs> I really did. I was like, hashtag guys. Like, oh, Lauren. I'm such an idiot. <laughs> You're an idiot. Oh, my God. I think Justin Bieber did it anyway. Probably. Yeah, <laughs> tell me that I find the spells. Um, so I'm looking at what the shop that you found has, and I'm, I see, like, see invisibility, or there is a dispel magic, um, there's a, uh, a dispel magic, uh, scroll. Would that work on that scrying thing? If, if you know that, basically, 
if someone were to be scrying on you and you guys had your invisibility detector thing up, you could see the little orb and you would be able to dispel the orb. Like, that, that would work. Um, it's a cloaked ball that is following us when the spell is activated. It's a sensor. So the way that scrying works is that they cast the spell and there's an invisible sensor that then follows the target. So if someone can see invisible things, you can see this little, it's like, you know, that big or so, like round. You can see it following the target, and but only if you can see invisible things and only if you happen to be looking at that person, you know, that there's a lot of variables. Scrying don't only lasts about 10 minutes, so it's like at any point someone could scry on you for a few minutes and then... Someone could scry on you for a couple right seconds answer. if they want. Sounds so dirty. Yeah, boy, yeah, right. <laughs> scry on you. Mom <laughs> can look at you for a few minutes and then go back. They better, yeah, they can. They better not kiss. Is there like a limit on anything. how much they can do it? Her yeah. or like. Nope. You as know. long as you don't. If you. There is a save involved. So if you um, fail the save, then they can do it as many times as they want. The moment that you, that you succeed, they can't um, do it again for another 24 hours. So. Oh on you. That particular person can't do it on you for 24 hours. Right. Do they need something of yours to do it? Like, they need an item of yours No, it just something? makes it easier. The, the If they have some kind of connection to you, then, then the spell is more likely. The DC goes down, basically, <laughs> to, for it to succeed. Gotcha. Mm. Um, Blade, all right. I see, like, Blade Ward... But I don't know exactly what that is. Was that your kid coffin, Rachel? I think they're both screaming. Someone, I heard something. <laughs> Something's happening. Oh god, that was mine. <laughs> that sounded like a velociraptor. Holy oh, shit! Oh god. <laughs> I might have to go. Oh no. <laughs> Let me wait till I'll get a text. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Danya, you didn't uh, even get to kill anybody yet. Shit. <laughs> no. I feel like that might be several days <laughs> off. Show you boom. What kind of D&D &D session is this? Come on. <laughs> um, so they're, exactly. they're able to show you um, like a minor illusion scroll. Um, the detect magic scroll, um... Is this happening, like, the next day? Like, uh, yes, for shopping yes. right now? Yeah. Okay. Or over, or over the course of the next few days. It depends on when you guys want to go back to Akin. You have, like, a week, so... There is a C, um, they have a C invisibility scroll. Mm. That one costs 326 gold. What was Blade Ward? Just to, just to ask. So Blade Ward is a level 1 spell. Oh, it's a cantrip actually that um, grants um, resistance to uh Uh oh. Oh, no. <laughs> like they, they're, they're, they're getting closer. <laughs> they're getting closer. <laughs> Such a horror movie. <laughs> uh, sorry, guys. I gotta go. <laughs> she, just, she just gets yanked down and off camera. <laughs> you see, like, little hands coming out of the corner. But Danya has to bring the girl and she's resting in Erdnot's basement. Yeah. <laughs> I'm assuming I won't be back before this is over, so I'll say goodnight now. <laughs> Alright. Oh, um, <laughs> <laughs> I know my nieces cry so well. Oh, She's man. got a good scream. <laughs> oh, yeah. She's got some lungs on her. Yeah, she does. Uh, kids can sound like little dinosaur creatures. It's kind of crazy. They can sound when they get <laughs> dinosaurs, like demons. They can oh, my God. All kinds of things. It's fucking unnatural. Mm -hmm. So. Van, you're a, you're a wise. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, so it's um like resistance to like piercing, slashing, bludgeoning, like mm. um for a round, I believe. 
Um, oh, that's the blade one. Until the, yeah, until the end of the year next turn, you have resistance against bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage dealt by weapon attacks. So it's... How much is that spell? At the shop that she found, it is 86 gold for that scroll. Now, how do scrolls work, like, for my character, for Micaiah? Could she have a scroll and, like, learn a spell like that? Yeah, scrolls, you can't learn it. That's the only thing that wizards can do. But okay. you, anyone can cast it, and if you're a spell caster, I think it's a little easier. I'd have to double check, but um, it's a one-time use, and then it's gone. Oh, just one time. Okay. Right. That's why okay. it was a good idea. Right. <laughs> for the wizard. <laughs> the only ones that attempt... can do that are wizards. Wizards right. are the only ones that can learn it. Okay. Right, because then gotcha. they can they write basically they write it in their book, and once they write it in their book, they, they can cast it whenever. I think next game I'm gonna be a wizard. <laughs> yeah. Grass is always greener. I know, right? You can always multi class. That's true, but I'm going for a different multi class right now. They they have um Cloud of Daggers as well. What's like that? Hold person. Oh, what's hold person? We always seem to need to hold a person. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. We're all <laughs> that need. We've that, had it like three times. What is that's that? What super, that's what my super expensive rope is for. <laughs> <laughs> Watch it break in one try. <laughs> I know, right? So, withhold person, you can choose a humanoid that you can see within range, and the target has to succeed on a wisdom saving throw or be paralyzed for um, one minute. It's a concentration spell. At the end of each of the turns, the target can make another wisdom saving throw, and on a success, it, the, the spell ends. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you cast it at a higher level, you can um, target one additional humanoid, but this particular scroll is just a second level, so you can, you can only cast it on one. Wow. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna leave that store. Yeah. <laughs> um, do we have a cart? Not yet. Yeah, it's gonna. We're gonna buy that. Um, yeah, I, we, I was. I was gonna, gonna say to to Zan or anybody in particular, I guess. But Zan seems to be the uh, the um, logistic minded one. Um, besides the cart, um, is there anything that anybody else can think of that we would need to buy from this guy to make our journey easier and pass it off? Uh, pass the story off well like uh or not has money so it shouldn't be like well that i know that issue. it's about to get cold so should, we should should probably get some colder gear and the colder gear it's harder to see us anyway uh, I think that's uh, Anthar, gave, but, Anthar gave us cold gear. yeah, yeah. Oh, then we're yeah. all set, see we well we should get wanna, some rations right i, I was just gonna say Food. we want to make sure we have rations at least I yeah. mean, we, My we should be able to, to between right. me and Vidanya hunt, but Some that's a process. Anyway, anyway, I'm sure also, we could stock up on, like, rations in the city, I'm assuming. If Oregon Trail has taught me anything, it's <laughs> keep a couple, it's keep a couple extra get wagon this. wheels and, a, yeah, don't shit yourself to death and always Not have an extra this. wagon axle. Yeah, just gonna say, have an axle, always yeah. have a wheel, and don't get dysentery. <laughs> and you will reach your destination. Did our horses make it to uh, where we are or anything like that? Yeah, so they're outside the city. the city, right? <laughs> on them, so horses are not allowed in the city. So Onvam had to drop you guys off, and then he told you that in a few days he would um, be bringing your horses like around and drop them off uh, up at Blackgate, Blackgate, like at where Akin is, um, okay. so that they'll be ready for you up there when you're ready to go north. Um, okay. Sorry, so... Abaddon, we had to bring them to the glue factory. Oh, hello! <laughs> oh. All right. I mean, so... I mean, as a last resort, we might have to eat those horses. Hope you know that, Avadon. Can we yeah. roll um, for to buy to buy rations? 
No, you don't have just... to roll. Okay. No, then during this week we went somewhere like what should we <laughs> what? I, uh, well, what's our ration count? Was it 18 currently? I think everybody had different amounts. Yeah, I think yeah. we all had that. I don't know. Yeah, we were all close, but we all had. Yeah, because I got one stolen right. right out of my back pocket. <laughs> all right, so I have I have eighteen. Right I now. have nineteen. I have. How much are rations? Seventeen. Twenty-three. And it's. <laughs> it's two two rations for a long rest, or is it mm-hmm. one for 17. a short and? Two for a long? Is that uh, it? That was uh, three, DM? three a day. Yeah, it's three a day. We'll do we'll three do a day. Three a day. Um, so one one day is going to cost you um, a gold and um, hold on, a gold and eight silver, or you can do. Um, We'll I'm gonna say, run up the tab for any or not. Yeah, right. We'll say that ten <laughs> days worth of food is eight gold. Oh, that's not bad. But you and guys need... also you'll remember you'll be in a caravan with multiple other people and guards and so, you know, like hunting isn't just a thing that only two people would do. Well, I mean yeah, I'm not saying like we get two months worth of rations, but just like a good starting point yep so you yeah, guys can just back. choose like whatever it is that you're gonna however much you're gonna you're gonna buy it's it's 10 is 8 gold I want snacks that's what I want 10 days <laughs> I'll buy another 10 days worth I thought Erdna was buying it all uh, oh, Erdy you're buying it all aren't you just said. the sweetest buying the stuff we need for the I was buying the cart and the axles and the dysentery medicine. That, that uh, I you said everything. You, you said you got digital. money, man. A dwarf is as good as his word, so I'm, I'm glad you could stick to that. Dwarfs are cheap and greedy. <laughs> yeah, they're also honorable, and you said that you would. I don't recall that, but yeah, fine. We'll just we'll <laughs> add it all to the to the Guilt. to the tab there. All right, so wagon. Guilt. Guilt. Guilt trip in the dwarf. So when you when you <laughs> return to Akin, he tells you that a wagon he'll sell you a wagon for um, forty eight gold. Um, you said you wanted some kind of like covering for that wagon. Yes. I mean, we're gonna be there for a while. You're using it for a while, I mean. Plus, you need to keep your wares uh, covered. You know, nice and safe. I'm, I'm going to assume that we need uh, <laughs> some sort of tents or weather protection in case so we're stuck tents. out raining. Yeah, you've got we four tents from your old travel days um, from a week ago. <laughs> um, <laughs> you have... Back um, in the day. Yeah. You can get more tents for sure. Uh, that would be at a different store from from him he's got like stuff for like I think we each and... individually need a tent it's probably safer to at least do two to a tent they're one person tents, so me. you'll you'll just be like oh they're really, one person tents yeah you'll be very like on top of each other but it's doable not comfortable um, but or not or not it's like half a person he can bunk with me <laughs> <laughs> are we, are, are we going to intertwine our beards at night to keep warm? <laughs> <laughs> we'll say he sells you the, the wagon, the covering, and like two um, two um, wheels extra, if you need two, two uh, for like 55 gold pieces. And then he, he asks you like I assume you fill them in on what you're you're gonna do. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So. Well, it's um, weird. I get such a sketchy. I get such a sketchy <laughs> feeling from this guy when we talk to him. It's like I don't want to trust him. Yeah. Does anybody else feel that way too? No, I think he's trustworthy. Yeah. So, so somebody, 
I'm not gonna roll for that. <laughs> are you? Wait, what are we rolling for? <laughs> well, I guess did you want to do an insight check on whether or not you believe he's trustworthy? Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, Eric's the one who doesn't trust him, so. Yeah, he is. I feel like you should sure. do it. You're the one who said okay. it. All right. I apologize if I'm crunching. I'm trying to eat these really crunchy chips as quietly do it. as I can. Eat all um, the chips. Um, I mean, so he's he's kind of a hard to read guy, but you don't get any kind of. When you're talking to him, you get the impression that he knows a lot more than he's saying to you. He's being careful about how he talks to you about this, but it's clear from the way he's talking to you that like, he knows what you're doing. Um, he knows some shit. Yeah. Yeah, that's how I feel. So, okay. um, so he tells you, he's like, so you're gonna, you're gonna, um, pose as a merchant, huh? With all, all of you as, uh, your guards? Yep. Eat pose. <laughs> he nods. Um, he's like, all right, well, it does look a little bit strange. I'm, I'll just let you know that right off the bat. It looks a little weird to have one merchant with five five guards. You guys do what you need to do. I'm going to assume you're professionals, and that's why Anthar uh, sent you to do this. But typically, uh, you see about, you know, two or three, and all the merchants will uh, come together and kind of share their guards. So that it's not so expensive. I know how you merchants like to hold on to your money. And he does this. He's like, I'm a merchant too, I know. So <laughs> hiring extra guards just to have them. Not something you see every day, but I don't know your life. So you do what you need to do. <laughs> do I don't know you, boo? you. But I don't know your should, life. should you want to get hired out, just hang out over at the tavern. Uh, the tent taverns. There will be... Uh, other merchants looking to hire out and you can make a little coin on the side just saying this is up to you so he he he's talking to you inside of his shop again so that it's a little bit more private and when he does that he like closes the door so that people don't come in but um he like gestures out to the, the outside um, he's like just hang out out there if you want to um but basically, you're going to want to keep checking back here, hang out in this area, and uh, when you start to see people that you recognize, just join their their group as they head up, out, out towards the, the north, towards Waterdeep. That makes sense? I don't know when they're going to arrive, I was told fairly soon. <laughs> Just check in every day, essentially. You're gonna want to hang out around Blackgate. This is where everyone comes to meet up to go north. So, I don't know when. I don't know what these people look like that you're looking for, but keep an eye out. Should be easy enough, based off of what I've heard. What do you know about the people that we're going to be following? <clears throat> Sorry, I had a chip in my throat. Sorry, did you ask how, <clears throat> how or what? What? What information do you have? Or any anything that we might need to know on our way? Anything helpful? Um, he looks over at you and he's like, I probably know about as much as you do. Okay. I'm sorry. One second. Chip. <laughs> Alright. So, quick question. Is this a short session? Because I don't want to get you started on anything. If you if we're going to go to bed in like five minutes. We're going to go night night? We're going night night. I got to go night night. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, I mean... Sorry. 
starting Sorry. the next starting the the next leg of the journey for like a saturday might be better because if yeah. we start now and we get into a battle like it's gonna go yeah. to like fucking midnight yeah yeah i say save it for saturday too i guess we could uh, with the dm's permission just downtime rp in the uh, chat uh, window yes. it like fucks around town until uh the cult shows up that works because we're already established now we're in the town so, uh, in boulders gate rather so yeah so you have yeah, several, sure. you have um several days um we will pick up on saturday um with uh the morning that so we'll do the the downtime role play in um, in the Discord chat, but um, let's just say about sorry, just pulling up my calendar. <laughs> I thought I was going to die on that fucking ship. I had to mute it and everything. Kind of ship. Oh, uh, it was late July kind that I was bringing when we were meeting up in person. With mm. Chia, Chia and Quinoa. Mm. Yep. Hey, you're so healthy. Right? Not, I'm not really, but I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> we got my glass of cherry juice. Tart cherry <laughs> juice. So we'll say... Um... Erdnot, on the on the eighth of uh, Leaf Fall, you actually get your letter that you had sent, and uh, are able to send it out. So about four days after you arrive, I sent to. Uh, yeah. I received my own letter. Yes, yeah, so you receive your own letter and send it <laughs> and send it out. Um. Let's see here. Um. And um about. Four days after that, you receive a uh, a letter from you, you. You receive your letter, um, so I'll send that to you. And then on the fourteenth, you guys are all hanging out uh, in Blackgate, and um, you actually. One of you looks over, and that person's not here. Uh, so Vidanya looks over and recognizes someone, um, and will pick up from oh. that point. Is you guys are all in the Blackgate area? It's been a several days. You almost Flashed. like you almost like have started to. I won't say forget what you're doing, but it's kind of like it's it's almost been like ten days since you arrived. Yeah. Um, so you're like, are they even showing up? Um, and you're all still hanging out in Blackgate, but you're enjoying yourselves in the city and catching up with things and doing whatever shopping that you want to do. Um, and then on the morning of Leaf Fall, Marpanov 14, um, Vidanya looks over and sees in the crowd of people, um, someone that she recognizes. Then we'll pick up there on Saturday, and hopefully she's there to be with us. Oh, she! Benadryl the babies. Some whiskey. Everybody so drug your kids in... on Saturday. Yeah, right. <laughs> are we filling in the time of those days in, in, like, downtime RP? Yeah, sure. We can do that. Okay. Ten days of fucking yeah. around! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, you have to come and meet my dad. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I've met him. Oh wait, in the game. <laughs> I'm like, I know that guy. <laughs> All right, I'm definitely bringing you. All right, guys. Uh, well, I have a good night. Well. Thanks for watching. All of the people who may have watched. <laughs> My audio you probably sucks, so I'm gonna watched. have to figure that out again. Um, and we'll pick up on Saturday. Um, and I have been thinking about doing some kind of giveaway to try to get to like 50 followers. So um, I'm going to do some more thinking about that and then maybe like announce it on, on Saturday to 
see if we can get people to like click that little follow heart that's at the bottom. Um, if we can get to 50 followers, then we can, it opens up a whole bunch of options for me to do on here. Um, so more to come. If we get to, if we get to 50 followers, I'll give away one free pass to my OnlyFans page. You know what? <laughs> to his OnlyFans uh, page. <laughs> I said that disgustingly, <laughs> disgustingly. Hey, I said everybody that pause and like, oh. <clears throat> It's a it's... lot of butts. <laughs> oh my god. It's a lot of butts. I've seen his butt. It's pretty butt. hairy, too. I mean, bums of greenness. When did, you have a... when did you see my butt? Dude, I've known you for I'm a long not... time, and we lived together. I've seen your butt. <laughs> yeah, true. And your balls. Especially right, that time that you right. had like that huge and hole in your pants. And let's turn it off. And, <laughs> and, and, and we're on the internet. <laughs> no, seriously, you should have should have saw the, the the rip in his jeans that this kid had. We had to stop at the mall to get him pants. Uh, okay. <laughs> I think I'd like a T-shirt that says "Bum of Greenest." Yes. Oh my God, we need to.